Simon, yeah. I've got a 90 year old who's been sent in from the care home saying she's a bit more confused. All right. Um, I have to say, I, I really can't tell. I've, I've, I've examined her. Yeah. She seems fine. She's confused. I have, I have no idea what is going on. There's no other history, and I'm totally stuck. Can and you, you help couldn't me get out? through to the care home? No. I, I rang them and they said, oh no, she's more confused. And of course, she's been with them only for the last three months. And the carer who thought she was confused is not at work. Okay, all right. So let's see what things we can do at the bedside that help us to work out whether this is a delirium, which is, as you know, an acute medical condition and needs further workup, or maybe just part of her established dementia. So key things that are useful are looking at her level of attention. So when you were interacting with her, was she paying attention to you or was she distracted, drifting off? Uh, now that you say that, actually she, she kind of wasn't. She, she, was, she was very easily um, started talking of other things while okay. I was talking. Quite frequently so she was hearing off. Yeah, she yeah. seems, yes. And was yes. there any sign then of an agitation? So psychomotor agitation, fiddling with things, pulling at your, your lanyard um, or so she, getting easily agitated? So she's got a little pet, pet stuffed toy with her. Ah. Uh, and she was quite definitely she's quite picky. Yes, yes, ah, she right. was. Okay. She, she was. And I suppose it's a bit early to say if she's in the ED, but fluctuation would be the other key aspect. So, uh, so not that I have seen, but they sent her in saying she has been yeah. quite agitated, Different but she hasn't herself. with me. So, so yes, yes, yeah. exactly. Okay, exactly. so I think if those three things are there, so she's you know, inattentive, uh, fleeting attention span, yeah. she's got some psychomotor agitation, and she's apparently fluctuating, that sounds to me like she's probably got a delirium, and I think we probably need to look a bit harder as to why she may have developed delirium before we make a decision about where, where she goes next. Okay, so that's a good point. So actually that reinforces for me what I hadn't necessarily given much attention to is that the history, the fact that she was actually quite agitated earlier but Absolutely. not as much now yeah. is, is quite important. Most important tool for yes. any day is the telephone, get in touch with people, know the patients yes. and find yes. out what's happening. Excellent, thank you. Cool. Uh, so in terms of examination, we, we have just done some near vision tests and some routine you know, yeah. examination, it seems fine. Is there anything specific I should be looking yeah, at? Yeah, okay, so things to look for, I always think of the top three common causes of delirium are acute infection, so sepsis or some other infection, so she's got no fever or anything like that to suggest infection? No, no. Yeah, but that no. would be a really common cause. Remember, not about urine dips alone don't yes. necessarily count yes. as uh, infection. Yeah. Second one would be metabolic disturbance, so dehydration, hypoglycemia, hypercalcemia, whichever acute kidney injury, but you say a near patient tests are okay. Yes. Yes. So the other thing I'd be really keen to know is her medication, her drug history. So if she's on any anticholinergic medication or confusogenic drug drugs. Mm -hmm. And there's this thing called the anticholinergic burden scale you can mm -hmm. look at. So there's a lot of common drugs that we don't think of as being anticholinergic, beta blockers, diuretics, that have got small amounts of anticholinergic activity. All of that can build up and cause delirium in, in some patients. So those are the top three things. And okay. then stuff that you probably do all the time, you know, make sure she's not constipated, not in urine retention, no pain, that she's comfortable, that she's been sleeping, all those sorts of basic activities or basic things. You've given me some really good tips, Yeah. but yeah. if I were to now go and share it with the juniors to teach them, give me a quick teach on what else I could do to support them do better assessment of delirium. Well, the assessment we've discussed. Yep. Yeah. So the key things to look for are fluctuation, change from baseline, hence the importance of phoning up. Uh, psychomotor agitation, so these are people yep. that are picking and so on. Might be hypoactive delirium, in which case they'll be obtunded, uh, but this fluctuation, psychomotor agitation, and inattention, and inability to follow a conversation are the key things. Okay. One of the tips for the juniors is actually if you come into someone's personal space, you might get a little bit uncomfortable with that, although you're not too bad. No. But most people get a bit Mind uncomfortable. Yes. <laughs> and that's the sign that there's a reduced arousal, reduced awareness. So there's a simple bedside test you can do there. But often these are people that um, are, we flagged up by page, uh, carers or people that know them well that there's been a change in their baseline cognition. Okay. 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 So tell a physical examination, uh, make sure of all the standard systemic things that we're that we're looking for, yep. but with special focus on a medication review yep. and, and also remembering that simple things such as constipation and um, urinary retention can actually Absolutely. support. Okay. Okay.